but it's my pleasure today to introduce our, our day chair, uh, Jim Eaton. Jim is a uh, uh, City of Lakes member since 2000. Um, Jim spent 20 years with Wilson Learning in sales and facilitation of leadership, sales, customer service, and team building programming. He also spent years independent in, in the independent consulting business, which is a major portion uh, and has included uh, the formation and facilitation of a Vistage CEO cohort and an independent opportunity to organize a 14 member nonprofit CEO executive director cohort, uh, which has included a 10 year connection with Avivo um, and our speaker today, Kelly Matter. Uh, Jim has been married to Susan for 53 years. He has three children and three grandchildren who thankfully all live in the Twin Cities area here. Uh, his grandson, which he always praises and, and raves about, 18-year-old uh, Oscar, is a proud freshman of Michigan State University. Jim's, as everybody knows, Jim's alma mater. Uh, <laughs> Finally, a special reminder, especially to Jim's friend, Jonathan Hobbs, who is not here today, uh, who's we're welcoming back. Um, really excited to have Jonathan back. But uh, Jim wants to remind you, Jonathan, go green. So with that, please welcome Jim Eaton. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, that rousing of applause. Well, I have a very special privilege today, and and I and I really not that I don't always mean things that I say, but I really mean it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's like most of the time, don't I'm just call me George, you know, whatever his name in New York. <laughs> anyway, I have a, uh, the privilege of introducing Kelly Matter. Uh, Kelly is the CEO of of Avivo, Avivo Minnesota. Uh, I've known Kelly, as you heard, at least 12, well, 12 years as she became, when she became the CEO of what was called then Resource Minnesota, then they changed their name to uh, to Avivo about five or six years ago. Um, first of all, a little bit about Kelly personally. Kelly uh, uh, is a mother of two grown daughters, or almost fully grown Uh the one is uh, her, the uh, the older one is Cassidy, who recently graduated from the University of Missouri School of Nursing. She's uh, uh, living in Austin, Texas, which is a vibrant community, and and I would guess a great place for a young professional nurse. And a younger daughter, Mackenzie, who's at the uh, uh, University of Tampa, uh, who is studying. She's a junior there and studying uh, accounting. Uh, Kelly's from Wisconsin, so uh, we didn't talk uh, Packer fan or not, but uh, oh, oh, Badgers, okay, that's okay. Uh, but anyway, she grew up in the southwest border area, right in the southwestern part of Wisconsin at the, on the border of the Mississippi and, and Iowa. So we have a lot of fun with Iowa jokes so, uh, here, but uh, we, we, won't go, we won't roll over into Wisconsin this morning. But anyway, let's talk a little, just a little bit about uh, Avivo uh, and, and Kelly's role in leading this organization, which I was, even though I followed the growth of it, is it employs 425 people. Uh, so when I talk about leadership, uh, which is really part of the theme uh, that I want to at least indirectly have you an incent, a, a sensitivity to from the role of a CEO's role in the nonprofit uh, community, uh, it's a significant one when you think of the the complexity of of one of the most big the biggest challenge of staffing right now. Uh, and given that so many of the people that work at Avivo are, are highly skilled people that are working in the whole field of social service, which includes mental health and employment uh, and and many aspects that take degrees and, and expertise. And uh, for those of you that have worked in that space, uh, the kinds of skill sets, not only the technical skill sets, but the empathy and emotional skill sets that go in that kind of work is truly unique. And uh, that that is, I know, an ongoing challenge of finding people for major projects like uh, like the Abibo Village, which uh, Kelly is going to particularly focus on in her comments this morning. Uh, Kelly is a champion for economic stability and advancement for all Minnesotans. Kelly has dedicated her entire career of all over 30 years to ensuring that Minnesota's most disparate community members have opportunities for personal, social, and economic success. She's an innovative leader in the workforce and development and social services committed to creating pathways for housing, recovery, and careers for all 
individuals. Uh, her accomplishments in creating systems that impel innovation and integration most recently has led Avivo in the expanding its work of ending homelessness. Those of us in the business community may have heard of the word, the, the acronym BHAG, a big, audacious, big, hairy, audacious goals. Now, I would say that ending homelessness is definitely qualifies as a BHAG. And it's one of the challenges that if you think about along with immigration and many challenges that go far beyond our community is certainly in that in that in that life in that space. So uh, we have some exciting insights that she's going to share about what what I believe and I've been intimately connected to the uh, Vivo Village since our our church gave them a significant grant and I'm sort of the liaison between our church community and that had allowed me to really get under the tent and really understand many of the major challenges that not only exist with the, the chronically homeless, which is what the uh, Vivo Village uh, welcomes, as well as the whole condition of homelessness and, and how that ties to mental health and addiction and many of the other things that impact upon people that end up in that space. So maybe that's enough to say to let me allow you to learn a little bit of what I've learned. And I'd like to introduce and welcome Kelly Matter. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jim, for your very, very kind um, welcome. And thanks to you. I know that Rotary is steeped in service, much like Avivo is, you know, uh, has a mission. We exist for service. So thank you for your service to this community and internationally. And I do want to, Jim breezed over it a little bit, but I also want to thank Jim for his role with Meeting House Church and the significant financial as well as volunteering and ongoing support that they are providing Avivo Village. Um, I, while I was sitting here, I don't know if you get, you know, kind of Star Tribune and other news updates, but while I was at the table this morning, I got one that said, is providing a portable toilet an endorsement of a homeless encampment? It's a part of a four-part series that NPR is doing. So it's timely and, 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 and very relevant to the conversation that we can have today. I'm going to whip through some slides, if you will, but um, really would like to just have a dialogue with you all and answer any, any questions that, that you may have. So I know people want to hear about Avivo Village, but Avivo Village exists because of Avivo's very, very deep roots and commitment to our community. Avivo, since 1960, has been an organization that has been about responding to community needs. Um, I'm not going to read aloud, but you know our mission says it all. We enhance well-being through recovery and career advancement while working to end homelessness. We know that you know, you can call it a three-legged stool. We call it a, you know, a comprehensive menu of services. But what we know is that none of these on their own support living well and working well, enhancing economic, social, health, stability for, for Minnesotans. Um, I want to touch briefly on our values. I think, you know, I think we have an emission, our mission, which is important, um, and it guides us in our work. It tells, it holds us accountable to what we do, but even more importantly is how we do what we do. What allows a Vivo to stand up the first of its kind in the country into our tiny home village and have the impact that we're having. And it is these values at our core for over 60 years, our organization, you know, long before Bruce and I were there, our DNA is about believing in the dignity of all people, every single human being, no matter how they show up at our door, we believe deeply in all people. We also are utterly committed to providing what we call a radical welcome. Again, our hope is that no matter how you show up at our doors or how we interact with you in the community, that you are going to feel important and you are going to feel welcome. And lastly, um, as an organization, we lean into curiosity. We also wouldn't have stood up the first of its kind in the country into our tiny home village if we weren't curious about how something different might work and can curious about continuous improvement and curious about our ability to end homelessness. And we think we are on the right path uh, in partnership with many, many others to end homelessness in Minnesota. 
and I'll get to Avivo Village, but it is important to understand who Avivo is. We were started in 1960 by a group of individuals, maybe much like yourselves. We were founded by Minneapolis community leaders and parents who at the time had adult children with disabilities. And as they were aging, they had concern for what would become of their their children uh, with disabilities. So again, in an innovative and curious spirit, Aviva was the very first vocational evaluation center in the state of Minnesota and one of the very first in the country as well. It was a really innovative um, idea and model where people with disabilities came to Aviva. We were called the Minneapolis Rehabilitation Center in 1960, and they tried work. We had large industrial equipment where people could try different jobs available in the community to see if they could be successful in those jobs in the community, and then we help them get connected to those jobs. We still do that work, but we do it with our business partners. We partner with hundreds of businesses. People can try and work. They can determine whether it's a fit. The employer can determine whether it's a fit, but we do that in the community. People don't need to come to us any longer. We based, our roots are at 19. Chicago Avenue, right at Chicago, Chicago and Franklin. That's where we started the very first vocational evaluation center. And we responded to the needs in our community. And we continue to respond to the needs of our community. We've grown from a um, our original building that, that Bruce and I still have the privilege of sitting in every day, um, sometimes with buckets around us. That's a I won't go there. But anyway, we've expanded in our community. Uh, we, we have 12 properties now on a true campus at Chicago and Franklin Avenue that consist of inpatient or residential and outpatient treatment, transitional recovery housing for individuals who are serving who are homeless and are coming to our substance use and mental health treatment. We have a mental health uh, clinic there and we have uh, you know a community service center where we're providing a, a variety of services out of including um, free meals Monday through Friday um, first come first serve for anyone in our community that is um, experiencing food insecurity as well. So we continue to respond to community needs. We added our substance use, our mental health treatment. And then the 1990s, actually in the, in the late 1980s, through a partnership with IBM, we launched um, what is now the Avivo Institute for Career and Technical Education. Again, we were serving people with disabilities, um, primarily physical disabilities, training them to become COBOL programmers for IBM. And we continue to do that much like uh, Dunwoody. We uh, have career track training programs where you can, uh, participants can earn credentials for, that will transfer to a Minsky institution and can get jobs because of the credentials they earn at Avivo that pay a, a higher wage for them. So we added substance use, mental health, um, a school, and Aviva was also the state's uh, pilot organization. We piloted uh, welfare reform or what is known as uh, Minnesota Family Investment in Minnesota. We uh, piloted it long before it was uh, became part of law, you know, when, when President Clinton uh, was in office. And describing what we did with a host of different names, I think we had 26 names registered with the Secretary of State. We were, kind of, we were naming every $5,000 grant we got and people didn't know who we were um, as Resource Inc. at the time. And we rebranded um, as Avivo in 2017. How many of you have heard of Avivo before Jim talked about us? So most of you, but not all of you. As a six-year-old organization, we still have work to do to, to help uh, so people know our mission and know what we do. So Avivo today, I've talked much about it, um, substance use, mental health uh, in our center or, you know, in our locations as well as very, very much in the community. I think Jim talked a little bit about the need and the difficulty hiring. And I know most of you are employers and have that same difficulty hiring. Our staff are meeting with people in homeless encampments. They're meeting with people in their home. They're, um, you know, licensed and credentialed staff. And we ask them to do really, really hard things at a time when the individuals we serve are really, really struggling. Avivo, going back to our values and our mission, we serve people who experience the greatest barriers to success, people who have experienced long-term unsheltered homelessness, long-term joblessness, long-term hopelessness in many instances, long-term, um, you know, public assistance, receiving uh, public assistance, um, histories of incarceration, long histories of trauma. Um, and I guess at the root of all of that and at the root of homelessness that we're talking mostly about today is deep, deep poverty. So Aviva Village, I know that's what, um, what people are interested in hearing about. You know, we sometimes say it's 
it's the sexiest thing that Avivo has done in our in our 60 year history. And indeed it is, I've said it probably at least three times, but it is the first of its kind in the country, indoor tiny home village. And this is something we say all the time. This Avivo village is about moving people from unsheltered homelessness, from sleeping outside to shelter, to the next right thing, to the next best thing for them. Um, you know, we hope over 3000 people go to work every year. It's really hard to, to work if you are sleeping outside, you know, when we're answering the question is, is uh, putting porta potties at a homeless encampment and endorsement of, of encampments. It's really hard to think about working if that is your living situation. Though I will say one of our very first residents at Aviva Village, Jeff, was the manager of a speedway um, for years. And he'd been sleeping outside for over two years. He had employees reporting to him. He was making decisions. He had keys to the speed to the speedway that he managed. And he had been sleeping outside for two years. He is no longer sleeping outside. He has an apartment through his relationship with us. Um, so this is just a history. I won't read aloud as well, but this is a history of, you know, of why Aviva Village, why the need for Aviva Village in Minneapolis and what, um, you know, what led up to Avivo Village in Minneapolis. And I think many of these things you maybe saw um, or at least read about um, over the last several years. Um, I think the greatest impetus for uh, our ability to stand up Avivo Village was COVID-19 and the, um, the support that came to our state, uh, you know, financially um, to do, uh, you know, to, to do innovative things. I, I say it all the time, I, I don't wish for a number, another pandemic, but the sense of urgency that the pandemic brought to our legislators, to, to all of us that wanted to do something to make a change, really is the only reason we put up Aviva Village in a four-month time period. What we did in four months um, traditionally probably would have taken four years. So that sense of urgency is something we would we would uh, like to get back without the loss of lives from COVID-19 and businesses and, and everything else that went with that. You know, I've talked a little bit about it, but I think it is important. You know, Avivo is one player among many, many players that are doing this hard and important work of helping move, people move from unsheltered homelessness, from shelter to permanent housing. I think we were the right player at the right time, and we have been doing a lot of work along our journey of ending homelessness. Um, a lot of um, our preparation began in 2018, when I think for many Minnesotans, um, homelessness became much more visible than it had been with the encampment along um, Hiawatha and Franklin Avenue. It happened to be placed uh, directly in between two Avivo locations. We had a staff of about 45 who were doing outreach, connecting people to homeless or to housing. We are helping about 900 people a year get permanent housing and help them keep that housing. And as they had to drive by this encampment, they simply could not drive by it another day and not do something about it. And so they stopped in the encampment and started um, developing relationships, bringing oranges, bringing socks, bringing hand warmer hand warmers, having conversations with individuals to understand why they were sleeping in tents along Franklin Avenue, and then what they could do. What they ultimately did um, is say, if each of us, there's 45 of us, if each of us took two more people on our caseload to connect two more people to housing, we can make a difference. We can have an impact. And that's what they, that's what they did. They started doing what they, they do uh, extremely well. Avivo had never been a housing provider. We'd always been a connector to housing providers. And that's what we did at the Wall of Forgotten Natives. That got the attention of what of who is now a significant partners of our of ours, Red Lake Nation. Um, individuals, um, you know, uh, 
the highest majority of individuals at the Wall of Forgotten Natives, and as you look at our demographics in our community, three, approximately 3% 3 of our population is Native. And at Vivo Village, close to 70% of individuals sleeping outside are Native. And at the Wall of Forgotten Natives, many of them are Red Lake uh, band members. So Red Lake Nation got part, you know, asked to partner with us, um, gave us a challenge of helping 100 of their relatives connect to housing in six months and that they would support us um, financially and in, in any way that they could. So we banded together, if you will, and placed 136 people into housing in six months, the highest number that we had ever placed into housing in the shortest period of time. And that launched our efforts to really dig further into unsheltered homelessness and connecting people um, from unsheltered homelessness to housing. We also, um, when the other encampment sprung up in uh, Powderhorn Park, our role was to knock on doors, knock on tent doors, meet all of the residents and determine, uh, you know, do a, get a demographic profile, um, understand why uh, they were sleeping outside at Powderhorn Park and identify what services they needed. Where were the gaps? that prevented them, what prevented them from getting housing, from staying at a shelter, from, from moving inside. And that the voice of um, hundreds of individuals experiencing unsheltered homelessness at Powder Horn Park was a big um, determination for what Aviva Village looked like, what services we provided and how we made it a, a very, very low barrier shelter. Hopefully that's my next slide. Kind of, I'll go into more detail, but uh, so what is Aviva Village in the North Loop? I think that's the other unique and wonderful thing about Aviva Village is we're in the North Loop. We're on Plymouth and Washington Avenue. Um, very, very bus accessible, very accessible to um, other businesses. And it's in a really nice neighborhood. Um, they, like Rotary, the North Loop Neighborhood Association cares about their neighborhood. They take care of their neighborhood and their residents. And so we were prepared for a pushback, um, a, a nimbyism or whatever you want to call it. And we had some of that, but for the most part, the North Loop Neighborhood Association embraced Aviva Village as their new neighbors. And I'll talk a little bit, well, I'll share now, you know, we too, we have a good neighbor, good neighbor agreement with the North Loop uh, Neighborhood Association and our community of residents at Aviva Village uh, support community as well. Uh, they have owned a uh, cleanup portion of Washington Avenue where they clean graffiti off of, of the, the bridge. Um, it's the bridge at 3rd and, and Washington and, and do a variety of other things in the neighborhood as well. So, um, and we're an old, for people who haven't seen it, it was a uh, Learner Publishing owned owns the building and it had been vacant and it's, it was a big wide open warehouse that we are leasing from the Lerner family um, for the net for about, about a 10 year period of time. And it is the perfect space to do what we did because it was wide open. Um, it was kind of a wide open, you know, a wide open spaces that we could design and, and do, do what needed to be done. Um, so it is 100 private, uh, tiny homes, it's organized like a village. So each unit is is eight by eight. Um, it, it is for adults. We believe that every single adult deserves their own private space. We do allow couples. Um, however, couples are defined, but if you're, but you are an adult, you're all, you're going to get your own private space. It's organized like a village. We have four separate communities that are designated kind of uh, by color of the units. Uh, the colors are loosely based on the Native American medicine wheel. They are placed, you know, uh, north, south, east, and west. And the colors we think of, uh, of white, yellow, red, and black on the medicine wheel, our colors are kind of a step out from those and they symbolize water, sky, water, sky, prairie, and moon. Sun, sorry. Um, so, and and they, you know, it's obvious your community. Each each uh, dwelling has a street number, um, just like your own home. People can get their mail to to their address, and our streets are in Ojibwe and English, and chosen by the residents that live there. So there's streets and house numbers in each 
on each unit in each village. Um, you know, it, as I said, it stood up initially because of COVID, you know, uh, traditional shelters, people might have been sleeping in cots right next to each other. The showers were all communal, communal um, people were getting COVID who lived in shelters at a, you know, at a faster rate than, than anyone else. So people were getting COVID, people were dying, people were going to the hospitals and this model became a, a COVID aware um, model. Individual tiny homes, people had their private space. Each of the restrooms and showers are, are single so they can be cleaned and sanitized after, after each use. And unfortunately, it was hard to build community in the early days because people ate their meals in their private home. Um, now we're able to eat meals together and do more community building. And it's very, very different than a traditional shelter, which I'll talk more about, as well as it uh, has deep, deep services. This photo on the left is a photo just from last night. They did a, a sip and paint experience uh, with North Loop neighborhood members as well as Aviva Village residents. It was a non-alcoholic um, sip and paint where they had different, you know, uh, plates and bowls and canvases and uh, a variety of mocktails and other beverages where they painted and built community and, and had something to take them last night. The picture on the right is at a strange angle, it looks like, um, but that is an example of what the, you know, of what the village looks like. Some of the roofs are pitched, some of them are flat to create a unique village feel and look. So this is quite simple. We make it very simple to move into a Vivo village. Um, the only criteria is that you are an adult and you are sleeping outside or in a place not meant for human habitation. You cannot come from another shelter. You need, that's the only criteria is that you are sleeping outside. Um, people do need to be referred by Hennepin County Street Outreach Team. There's seven different teams across Hennepin County of which Avivo is one of and any of them can refer to Avivo Village. And we just do a first come first serve. We set it up originally where you know, um, AICDC got a slot and then Simpson got a slot and then Avivo took the next one and it didn't work. Um, uh, units were staying open too long. So first come first serve, if you bring someone to Avivo uh, village today and we have an opening, your person is getting moved in today. This is, this is a very, very simple depiction of the program model. The top is, the on-site services, very, very deep enriched on-site services, um, connecting people through MNsure, getting people connected to health insurance. We have a partnership with the Native American Community Clinic where people can get on-site um, uh, primary care. Avivo has uh, a mental health therapist on-site and can do individual therapy and group therapy. Avivo provides uh, chemical health assessors. So if you are ready uh, for treatment, we will assess you and get you referred to chemical dependency uh, screening. Um, and then housing stabilization. Avivo's um, staff of housing case managers based out of Avivo Village. So they meet with people. They're available to people every single day because the goal is to move from Avivo Village to permanent housing. Um, and, and in fact, you know, that is what we've been doing since we opened. We had a party in October celebrating 100 people move from unsheltered homelessness to, to housing. So this is what the experience at Avivo Village is, what we want um, residents to experience. It's very clear. And people ask what that means. It means you can bring your pet. Um, anytime the person may not move inside, because all they have left is their pet. Um, and I think any of us that have pets know the importance of our pet. And so you can uh, you can come with your dog or your cat or your domestic pet is what we say. And I think we've had a cockatiel. And I've got numbers of dogs and cats, but we've also had a cockatiel. And what else was there? There was some, anyway. But I think a guinea pig or something. But anyway, domestic, domestic pets are allowed. Um, you know, we know that every single person that comes in has experienced great and significant trauma. And so we approach that, you know, we provide a trauma informed environment and care. It's simple things like um, 
circadian rhythms are off when they move into a vivo village. People are awake at night because they're safest by staying awake at night and people sleep during the day. So we we gradually shift the lighting so that um, it, it aligns to people's circadian rhythms. Um, we know when people move in more than anything else, you know, based on what I just described, are tired. We do the minimal amount of paperwork to get you a bed with new sheets and a new pillow and a new quilt. Thanks much to Jim's, uh, our partnership with Meeting House Church. And people generally sleep for three days. They lay their head down. They get uh, uninterrupted, safe sleep. And they get up and use the restroom and they go back to sleep. Um, and that's the, the typical experience for someone moving in. And then we slowly provide the wraparound services and support that they need. We've talked a lot about COVID already. You know, it's a 24 seven staff and security. Um, we do in addition to their unit, um, which is a private and secure and locked, um, Avivo staff can override and get in the unit. Uh, additionally, we have lockers with a, with a key that people can store any other personal private belongings, no questions asked. Um, you can come and go during the day. That's different than a traditional shelter. It's people's homes. You can come and go 24 seven, just like you and I can come or go 24 seven from our homes. Um, and we're working really significantly to build a sense of community through the sip and paints. There's something going on all the time that people can engage in and they do. When we celebrated the 100, uh, 100 people housed, one of our residents spoke, and he is, going back to the musician, he is a professional musician and rapper, a very well-known professional musician and rapper in our community. Um, he does still make a living, and now he is supporting other Avivo um, this with a serious mental illness to, to uh, you know, develop their, their profession and their skills. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we have, um, so every single person, so we have um, positions, we have runners, and our runners are available 24 seven to, to kind of handle a variety of needs. It might be picking up a prescription for someone that is diabetic or has a mental health prescription or other, and you know, just helping meet community needs. Um, we have service support specialists that are, you know, on the 15 minutes, making sure everyone's okay. Um, and so they are knocking on doors. They are, you know, looking face to face, making sure a, per, um, a person is doing okay. And every resident does have a housing case manager that develops a plan with them almost immediately when they're ready to get them connected to permanent housing. Yeah, I mean, this is on your, I won't read this. This is on your table. I think I'll just quickly run through this. We've served 351 people uh, since we opened on December 16th of 2020. Um, 119 people have moved to safe permanent housing. You know, I, I have a new number actually when I did this last night. We have reversed over, we've reversed 91 overdoses, all 100% successful. Um, so those are 91 lives saved, literally saved by Avivo staff. Had they been sleeping outside, um, most likely they they would not have survived. Um, we've connected 62 to healthcare. We've had 14 babies born at Avivo Village. Um, you know, that's something that gives me pause every time I think about it. As a mom of two daughters, um, these are babies who might have been born in a tent, um, may have gotten, you know, to the emergency department. Um, babies, these babies most likely would not have survived um, and moms, you know, and baby would not have been together successful. Um, and then we've had 22 pets. And I'll end this, Jim, and open up to questions. Um, I think um, on that note, I'm going to tell the story of our very first resident um, that moved into Aviva Village in dis December of 2020. Um, she was a young woman. Uh, she was 20 years old, the age of my daughters. She was four months pregnant, um, had not received any prenatal care, and she was very malnourished because of morning sickness. She had not uh, been able to keep food in. She moved in in the evening. We were able to connect her to um, 
a nurse practitioner from Native, the Native American Community Clinic who prescribed medication to keep food down. She had her very first warm meal that she had kept down in months and months that first night at Avivo Village. She, um, we were help, we were able to help her move out with her significant other into permanent housing in early May of 2021, about three weeks before she gave birth to a healthy baby boy. And she's now in school. Um, she's primarily housed. She's in school. She has a healthy baby boy and she is ready and will take that next best step for her and her family. Yeah. Okay. Did I talk too long, Jim? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Wind me up. Well, here, let me just wrap up. We all know that one of the patterns of rotary is officially stopping around 8 30 in our case yes. but but kelly is and bruce are bruce is very informed we'll stay around and talk to you i, I suspect there's a lot of questions out there that you might ask uh i guess the theme i want you to sense is this is disruptive it's never been tried before it's new think it's breaking that cycle of traditional how people view and respond to this crit critical need of, of chronic homelessness it's systemic. They look at all the things that factor into to recovery, and it's sustainable. It is something that can be replicated. You never even talked about people coming to Vivo and said, we should do other places from around the country. So it is getting attention. So uh, anyway, stay around. I would like to give you a gift for, for being here. We are very involved with an Oregon nonprofit called Way to Grow, which focuses on... Oh, do you? Oh, and we give them hundreds of books for their kids. We'd like you to sign this book in, in your, your name and honor. And we also have a book that fell out on the floor. What I, might have, I have a pen. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't realize it was, uh, well, it has a pen with your name on it that you can remember. <laughs> well, you're not. <laughs> There's the cellophane that, that came with it. So anyway, so uh, you're welcome to, uh, I suspect a lot of you have, have questions and, and Kelly and Bruce will stick around and answer those. And thank you so much, uh, Kelly, for, for joining us this morning. find it oh <laughs> there you go well that's yours to keep <laughs> all right well thank you kelly for being here as our speaker thanks jim uh, i want to thank our other volunteers our greeter jennifer van wick um reflection from tony Eamons, wonderful and uh, an appropriate reflection uh happy bucks led by cindy lenny our day chair jim eaton as i mentioned zoom masters brock and greg and our club administrator uh steve morris uh thank you guests for joining us uh thank you um the the, the kids from uh, fair school students um, we'd love to see you again uh next week we have patty anderson from north star therapy animals i mentioned uh there will be animals they're gonna bring dogs but you can't bring your own so sorry about that <laughs> Um, but there will be dogs. They do have other animals, but they're only bringing dogs um, next week. So it should be a really fun uh, presentation um, and interactive. Uh, after that, on the 15th, Sharon Budworth will pr present the annual financial outlook, which is always interesting and exciting. And then on the 22nd, Justin Grammons will present and share applications of computer vision and the future of work. With that, go out and have a wonderful Rotary Week. Thanks.